denounce the failure of the Supreme Court to accept their case and it's now not only Bush and Clinton's responsibility before him for the unjust and cruel imprisonment of the five, it is now the responsibility of the Obama administration. And so it's up to us now, sisters and brothers, to demand that the Obama administration free the five immediately. This is a statement. Um <clears throat> it's a declaration by the presidency of Cuba's National Assembly. The U.S. Supreme Court announced today, without explanation, its decision not to review the case of our five comrades who are unjustly imprisoned in that country for struggling against anti-Cuba terrorism that is sponsored by U.S. rulers. We see manifested once more the arbitrariness of a corrupt and hypocritical system and its brutal treatment of our five brothers. Our struggle to win their freedom will not diminish for one instant. Now is the time to step our actions up and not leave even one space uncovered or door unopened. Responding to the infamous decision, Gerardo Hernandez declared, quote, based on the experience that we have had I am not surprised by the Supreme Court's decision. I have no confidence at all in the justice system of the United States. There are no longer any doubts that our case has been, from the beginning, a political case. I repeat what I said one year ago, June 4, 2008. That is, as long as one person remains struggling outside, you will continue resisting until there is justice. You will see. Cuban five will be free. Barack Obama, you will see. The Cuban five will be free. You know, people ask me, uh, why are you going? You know, what, what good is it going to do? Why do people march? It doesn't do any good. We have to keep marching. We have to keep gathering. We cannot let them forget. The only way the Cuban five, the only way Leonard Paltier, the only way Mumia are ever going to be free is when these movements become global movements. Today is a day of infamy. Five innocent Cubans who fight terrorism and defend revolutionary Cuba the finest example of human progress in the world today were denied a hearing before the U.S. Supreme Court. The same Supreme Court which a few months ago also without comment denied Mumia Abu Jamal his writ of certiorari with the intention of keeping Mumia in prison for the rest of his life. That's the intention of this government to persecute the innocent while the real terrorists walk the streets of Washington, D.C., in the White House and in the halls of Congress, while the real terrorists saturation bomb the people of Pakistan and Iraq and Afghanistan. Jail Posada, free the Cuban five. Jail Posada, free the Cuban five. Jail Posada. Free the Cuban five. When we are confronted every day with the government talking about a war on terror, we understand how hypocritical that is when we look at the case of the Cuban five and the case of Luis Posada Carriles. The Cuban five are fighters against real terror, the terrorism that emanates from Washington, D.C., from Langley, Virginia, and from Miami, Florida. Yeah. And Luis Posada Carriles is being protected by the U.S. government every day. But who was the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, when Posada organized the bombing of the Cubana airliner in 1976? What was that man's name? 
It was George H. W. Bush. And Posada had George H. W. Bush's phone number in his pocket when he was taken into custody. I think what Miguel Molina and others said earlier here today, Gavilan, is true. It's not going to be the courts that free the Cuban Five or Mumia or Leonard Peltier or the Angola Three or the San Francisco Eight. It's going to be the people. So we got to continue the struggle. Thank you. Today, we have somebody who is a representative of the FMLN in the Salvadorian Congress. His name is Ricardo González. Como grupo parlamentario, nosotros tenemos un comité de solidaridad con Cuba. Y uno de los temas principales que nosotros estamos apoyando es la liberación del grupo de los llamados al grupo de los cinco. Y en comunicados que hemos hecho a la prensa a nivel nacional e internacional, En esos comunicados hemos exigido la liberación inmediata de nuestros compañeros cubanos aquí en territorio de los Estados Unidos. Porque el tema de los presos políticos en nuestro país fue uno de los grandes problemas que tuvimos cuando estuvimos en, la, en el conflicto armado que tuvo que pasar nuestro país. También como Nos comprometemos como fracción legislativa del FMLN de seguir realizando esfuerzos para poder llegar a un feliz término sobre esta demanda internacional de la liberación de nuestros compañeros. I'm also proud to tell you that this July I'm going to Cuba with the Vince Ramos Brigade and we will challenge, we will challenge cruel blockade and tell the government that we will not stand idly by while they wage war on the Cuban people. Yeah. The five have told us that as long as we're in the streets, as long as we're pushing this movement forward, that they're inspired to continue with their fight. And I have to say I'm inspired, inspired by their strength, their solidarity, and their love of their brothers and sisters. We know what the U.S. government really wants to hide from us is the fact that they know that if the truth about the socialist revolution got out, it would uh, unite people in a fight for their liberty and their own freedom here in this nation. And they don't want you to know what living in a socialist country is really all about. There will have to be a great multiplication of efforts for the five and to strike down the life sentences of Gerardo and to bring justice to them. They singled him out because he was the leader of the group. None of them ever had a weapon. None of them ever harmed anyone. They saved two Cuban airliners from being bombed. There were active plots against two planes. We already know of another one that was bombed in 1976. These men sacrificed their well-being for us and for the Cuban people. Free, free the Cuban five! Free, free the Cuban five! Free, free the Cuban five!